I give you a warm welcome once again on SLTV Lab. My name is Mr. Shadrach Kabumurin. Today we are going to see the video about cardiac physiology or physiology of the heart. We will see in brief the parts of the heart and their function. And please, we will know why doesn't our heart get tired? It works the whole life of a human being. Why doesn't it stop? We'll find this into the video. Please stick on it from the beginning up to the end. You will find out more about cardiac physiology. So guys, the human heart is made up of four chambers. There is first, right atrium, there is left atrium, there is left ventricle, then there is right ventricle. The left atrium is connected to the left ventricle by mitral valve or bicuspid valve. The right atrium is connected to the right ventricle by tricuspid valve. Then the right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary artery by pulmonary valve. Then the left ventricle is connected to the aorta by aortic valve. Let's see this external part of the heart. Here is superior vena cava. There is inferior vena cava. Then there is the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. Here we see the left pulmonary veins and then right pulmonary veins and then finally we see the aorta. That takes blood into other part of the body, taking it from the heart. The human heart will receive the oxygenated blood from all over the body through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava into the right atrium. Then blood will go into the right ventricle and the right ventricle will push blood out of it into the pulmonary artery. There is left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery. Blood will go into the lungs to get oxygen and then blood will come back into the heart through the left pulmonary veins. Then from the left atrium into the left ventricle but also blood will also come into the heart through the right pulmonary veins good then blood will meet into the left ventricle then the left ventricle will push blood out of the heart towards other part of the body through the aorta so then blood will go and be distributed in all parts of the body. Here is the summary. The oxygenated blood returns to the right side of the heart via the inferior and superior vena cava. It is pumped into the right ventricle and then to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. Then carbon dioxide is released and oxygen is absorbed. The oxygenated blood then travel back to the left side of the heart into the left atria then into the left ventricle from where it is pumped into the aorta and arterial circulation into all body parts when ventricles contract normally they push blood out into the aorta and pulmonary arteries. You see, this is the left ventricle. When it contracts, you see its inner side into the chamber, it is narrowed compared to here. Here it is widened, which means here it is relaxing. Here it is contracting. Blood will be pushed out into the aorta. This is the aorta. When 
the right ventricle which is this is contracting it will push blood out into the pulmonary arteries here is the left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery and then when this ventricle relaxes, blood moves from the atria into them. Here it is the left atrium. When this ventricle relaxes, blood will move passively from it down into the left ventricle. The same happens when this right ventricle relax when it relaxes blood will move from the right atrium into it passively good guys during ventricular relaxation actuary blood moves passively from the atrium which counts 75% of the whole blood moving from the atrium into the ventricle but at the end of ventricular relaxation the atria contract and push extra blood into the ventricles and that is what we call after kick and it's count 20 percent of the whole blood going into the ventricles you see 75 plus 20 it is 95 there is no other five which make it a hundred percent which means there is an extra space within the ventricle that is not filled which is five percent So guys, what you should know is that two sides of the heart never directly communicate. Blood travels from right side to the left side via the lungs only. Let's see. When the right ventricle contracts, it will pump out blood into the left lung and into the right lungs. I mean the right lung through the left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery and then blood will come from the lungs into the left ventricle through pulmonary veins i mean left pulmonary veins and right pulmonary veins and this is the way only these two chambers can communicate is through the lungs just that is the only way even though those two sides don't communicate directly the two atria contract simultaneously and the two ventricles contract simultaneously you can see on this video they are contracting at once good so guys 
in normal life a pump needs outside power source all electricity to work isn't it the human heart has a similar need for a power source and also uses electricity fortunately we don't need to plug ourselves in to the mains the heart is able to create its own electricity electricity or electrical impulses via a specialized conduction pathway which is conduction system of the heart so this pathway is made up of five elements let's see them there is SA node or cyanoatrial node. Then there is AV node or atrioventricular node. Then there is bundle of His. And then the bundle branches. There is left bundle branch and right bundle branch and finally there is the Parkinje fiber the Parkinje fiber are the ones into the walls of ventricles there is right Parkinje fiber and left Parkinje fiber now we know part of the heart and how they communicate to one another and what makes the heart contract. When the heart contracts, it beats. Let's see the stages of just a single heart beat. The fifth stage is atrial depolarization, which means atrial contraction. The second is ventricular depolarization or ventricular contraction. Then the third is atrial and ventricular repolarization, which means atrial and ventricular relaxation. And this is how the heart beats. Good. It contract, relax, contract, relax. And the number of heart beats per minute is called heart rate. Well, the quantity of blood pumped per a single heartbeat is stroke volume. The, the amount of blood pumped in a minute is cardiac output, which is stroke volume times heart rate. And you have been wondering, the heart works the whole life. Why doesn't it get tired? And let's see the answer. The heart doesn't get tired because its muscles have many and many mitochondria. 35% of it is made up of mitochondria, while other muscles have only 3 to 5%, so you can imagine. You wonder, the heart never gets tetanus also. This is because it has enough absolute refractory period. The refractory period is a period in which a muscle cannot contract because of a new stimulus. It is in the absolute refractory period. So the heart muscles have enough absolute refractory period thank you for watching the video please don't forget to like the video share it to your colleagues and don't forget to subscribe may god bless you so much